all right guys welcome back to another web security video my name is Mehul, and in this one we'll be taking a look at some defense mechanisms for the web security part so this is basically the part one of i guess two videos for defense mechanisms let's see how many we can create and in this one we'll be discussing user access and stuff so the basic principles for defense mechanisms is basically you have to prevent users from having unauthorized access for your web application you have to handle user input to prevent unknown behavior on your server or on other users profiles or you know any sort of page which is exposed to them and you have to monitor the application itself for you know for performing uh, for performing analysis or seeing if there's any sort of attack going on or if there's any sort of mischievous activity done by any sort of user so starting with user access in this one um, basically it consists of authentication so authentication in authentication you have to make sure the user is who the user claims he or she is right you have to treat all the users anonymous by default anonymous is basically the lowest level of trust you can have on any user so your application by default should treat all the users as anonymous that is you should have lowest level of trust or no trust at all on any user whether it's any user submission or any user input and user action whatever it is right for improving authentication control you can also have multi-stage login that is maybe otp on email address that is one time password on email address two-factor authentication stuff like that so that could be implemented to improve authentication now there are some fundamental flaws with authentic authentication as well wh which are very commonly found on the web so for example the first one i can think of is guessing usernames with error messages and you know different sort of messages which is like one of the uh, most common flaw i would say in authentication mechanisms and i'll just show you one example as well real quick after this um, there are uh, login bypasses as well for authentication systems which is whole another deal but it still happens right the most famous not really the most famous one i wouldn't say that but you know the one which came to my mind immediately when i uh, wrote this point was the tender router login bypass which basically allowed you as uh, any user who is connected to some sort of wi-fi to bypass the router login authentication and modify the router configuration um, basically just by immediately as an anonymous user itself so you can just google the tender router login bypass thing just google this phrase and you'll just know how this worked right but for now i want to show you this guessing, getting, guessing usernames with error messages thing so yeah i won't get into how or why this works but uh, you know i i have the site it's kind of like a service i used to have before but what these guys do is for example if i enter anything you're gonna see that well let's say role number or password provided is incorrect please try again but what happens if i enter correct role number and password is obviously incorrect and if i hit login you see that while they were coding this interface they were actually checking for role number and password and somewhere on their back end they have the implementation if the role number is correct and password is wrong return this message if both are wrong then return the other message and the other message had this n as small now the things like these small things like these in web security can actually help you discover a lot of possible um resources a lot of paths a lot of routes which are which should not be open which should not be open to people right so once i have discovered this flaw i can basically now validate any sort of user on this site so if i maybe just go ahead and try to log in with the admin um you see that we get a small end that means there's no user admin whatsoever so i won't waste my time brute forcing any sort of password for admin user at least right so administrator so i can basically just you know pull out a dictionary of common administrator accounts and you know just filter it down to ones which exist on the site and so on and so forth so gets get get into that stuff right so this is basically one of the flaws so moving forward the next thing we have is session management with authentication comes session management so session management allows um, your server to 
differentiate one user from other users, right? So your server would be receiving multiple requests a second. Some are for static resources, some are for, um, you know, some are for actual data retrieval, some are for authentication, so on and so forth. So it, it allows you to differentiate one user from other. And how does it do that? It basically creates a session for every particular user using a token. Now this token is sent to the client which makes use of this token and sends it back to server on every request or on at least on the request in which he or she wants to authenticate him or her herself. And uh, that can be done by HTTP cookies or basic auth. And finally, a couple of flaws with session management could be weak or predictable authentication tokens. That is, your tokens are basically just combination of username and password and MD5 over that. So that's that's a weak combination of token. And maybe if you're storing session data on client side unencrypted, that could be accessed by anyone who's browsing the site. First case. Secondly, anyone maybe who found a cross-site scripting attack, some sort of some sort of vulnerability is able to extract data from local storage. So that is also one of the flaws with session management, which is pretty common. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one real quick.